Hi friends, I am Chandrasekhar here again. This time I would like to talk about planets and how they give their results. <coughs> the reason is uh, there is a lot of confusion uh, about how planets actually deliver their results. The primary reason is that planets have different type of roles to play at different times and in different uh, area of uh, the Jataka's life. So there are natural malefics and natural benefics. Then there are fun functional malefics and functional benefics. You also have planets in transit. And then there are planets who are karaka or indicators for certain areas of Jataka's life. Generally the question that is asked by many astrologers is about how they would manifest. The assumption is if a planet is yoga karma, he will always give good results. If a planet is shubha, he will always give good results. Now though this is not exactly wrong, we have to uh, uh, look at areas where they operate. See, natal chart is more about the impact of planets as benefits or malefics in the houses that they occupy and the houses that they aspect. Then, as far as dashas are concerned, we look more for the functional nature of a planet. So, a functionally benefic planet in its dasha shall give benefit results. This has to be understood properly. Again, uh, the exceptions and the additional rules about strength of bhava operate insofar as the natal chart is concerned. So, for example, if the lord of the lagna is aspected by the lagna lord, then the lagna bhava, the, the first bhava is powerful. If he is aspected by Jupiter, the bhava becomes powerful. If it is aspected by, by Mercury, it becomes powerful. Similarly, malefics aspecting those bhavas mm, would generally harm. Now the question comes is if a planet is naturally malefic and aspects his own Rashi in a particular bhava, then generally what happens is the person represented by that bhava suffers to some extent. Whereas other uh, indicators of that bhava uh, grow, those which are not physical. So let us understand this. When we say that because a bhavesh is aspecting the bhava, he gains power, it has always like any rule, there are exceptions and here also we find the exceptions. Jupiter uh, occupying a bhava uh, does not protect the bhava, is a principle, uh, though many have different opinion about it. But being a benefit, will it harm very heavily? No, he will harm in a manner which is not exactly a violent manner of harming that bhava. Similarly, Saturn occupying a particular bhava protects that bhava, which means it will not harm that bhava. We have to first understand this part of it. Now, this is as far as the natal chart goes. Then comes the functional nature of the planet where the trine lord, especially if they are, they also happen to be the lord of the square, are called yoga karma. So their dashas will give good results. That doesn't mean that they in transit will always act uh, in a good manner, which is generally the um, understanding of uh, astrologers most of the time. Now then the third part comes is what happens in transit. Because, see, natal uh, chart, as a matter of fact, indicates the potential that a Jataka has. It also shows the resources that he has, the positives and the negatives of his personality. Whereas, Dashas indicate periods when those particular planets, either harming or damaging the chart or giving strength to the chart, will give good results or bad results. And the third part is transits. During transits, the planets provide the final trigger for any uh, 
event to actually occur at a particular point of time. So, in transit what happens is the malefics will generally cause harm in the house that they uh, transit and also the house that they aspect. This also is applicable to Saturn who generally occupying a bhava does not harm their bhava. Again with uh, Jupiter because these, these are the planets where we apply the exceptions in the natal chart. Uh, in case of Jupiter wherever he uh, whichever bhava he occupies in transit and trines because his aspects are always trines on aspects mm -hmm. uh, and uh, aspects by the seventh house those bhavas will have something good happening there this also of course applies to mercury and uh, venus who are benefics and again for mars mars would uh, have the bhava he is uh, occupying in transit and aspecting by fourth and the eighth house besides the seventh uh, house aspect in the uh, transit because that is how we aspect his influence goes there now having understood this we have also to understand that Mahabhashal of planets are of long duration for example for Venus it can be 20 years and nothing is static for 20 years so then you go to the next dasha, next level of dasha that is Antar dasha then you go to the Pratyanta dasha and then uh, having understood how dasha operate and how the functional nature of the uh, uh, planet will manifest we should come to a conclusion whether whatever is happening whether by aspects or by presence of the transit planet is it going to give you good results or bad results uh, i think this uh, short soliloquy of mine if you can call it uh, should be sufficient uh, to understand basically why many a times we find that x uh, you know planet is my yoga karaka and it is not giving me good results or why planet is ma uh, functionally malefic and yet gives good results to me in its dasha or sometimes that x planet is supposed to be naturally benefic but he harms me in his dasha so you have to uh, separate all these three uh, parts the natal parts planets will behave in a different fashion as far as th their own dasha are concerned they would uh, you know manifest in different ways because they just uh, indicate good or bad happening at that particular point of time and in transits again they will manifest in a different manner you have to uh, collate all these things together and then come to a conclusion so i uh, think this should be enough and then before i take your leave because the last lecture was pretty long i'm i'm sure uh, the listeners might have been now bored to listen to a 12 minute long uh, speech of mine. So <clears throat> before we leave, we have also to understand the malefics in natal chart. If they are doing something which is by their very nature, uh, what they ought to do, they might not harm the uh, bhava that they occupy and aspect. So for example, Mars in fourth, if that person is a fourth house is also a house of graduate level education or the qualified level of education which can give you the um, career so if uh, that person because mars is an active planet it has a lot of energy so if that jataka is a player and is a player of uh, good repute and puts in his efforts into that or is studying for technical subjects which come under the domain of uh, Mars, then uh, you may not find that his uh, metric, I mean, graduation career is has suffered any setback. Though there would be setback, but it would be of a very minor scale. So this is how we have to um, look at planets. Or like if Saturn is there, and then you take a course which is connected with Saturn, then that course by its very nature will be of a longer duration. So there would not be much harm to the, uh, uh, I mean, there would not be much delay in uh, going through his, I mean, completing his uh, graduation or whatever is the qualified examination required to get a career in the country in which he resides. Having said that, I hope you like this and let me have your reactions. And then uh, um, I propose that my next uh, lecture would be or, or um, speech
speech or whatever you want to call it uh, would be on bhavas and how the bhavas manifest and how we should look at it thank you very much see you again bye